Do you know how to build a link shortening service in .NET? This is a common system design interview question where you need to create a system that can take a long URL and return back a unique shortened URL. When someone tries to navigate to the shortened URL link, the system is supposed to redirect them to the original long URL. This will be an interesting system design exercise, so let's dive in. This is the baseline that I'm going to use for this implementation. I have a .NET 7 web API and a Docker Compose project which I'm going to use to run my database. In this case, I'm going to use SQL Server to store my shortened URLs. And now we need to build a link shortening service using .NET. I'm going to start by exposing a minimal API endpoint, which is going to be a post endpoint. I'm going to give it a route of API slash shorten. And this will be the endpoint where we pass in a long URL and return back the shortened version. So what do we need to implement this? Well, first of all, I need an object to represent my API request. So let's go ahead and create a models folder, which is going to contain my request and response objects. And I'm going to create a new shorten URL request. This class will be really simple. All I need is just one string property which I will call URL, and it's going to need a getter and a setter, and I'm just going to give it a default empty value. And now I can use my shorten URL request in my minimal API endpoint to accept the request from a client of our API. So let's grab the request, and I'm going to import the using statement. Now I need to validate that the URL that we are passing in is a proper URI. So how do we do that? Well, we can say if URI, try create, and I need to pass in the URL that we are trying to shorten. I need to say which kind of URL this is. This is an absolute URI, and we can accept the parsed URI as an out parameter. Now, I'm not going to use the parsed variant, so I'm just going to use a discard parameter. And if we can't parse this URL properly, I'm going to return a bad request from my endpoint. So I'm going to say, return results bad request and we're going to say the specified url is invalid so we're going to return this as the error response to the user and now let's see what is the next step that we need to do at this point we know that the long url that is specified is valid and we need to do two things first of all we need to shorten it and generate a unique short url and secondly, we need to persist it in the database so that we can later use it for redirecting users to the original URL. So let's start by introducing an entities folder, which is going to represent my entity framework core entity. Let's give it the name of shortened URL and let's create this class. So what am I going to place inside? I'm going to use a GUID as the identifier of this entity in the database then we're going to obviously need the URL and this will be the long URL for this link. Then you need to decide if you also want to persist the short version of this URL or you can just persist the unique code for the shortened URL. I'm going to use both of these approaches so that you can see what they look like. So I'm going to persist a code which is going to be part of my short URL. In a proper application, the shortened URL would be scoped to a specific user, but I'm not going to be implementing that. And I'm just going to create a new datetime field, which I will call created on UTC. The next thing we need is a way to take in a long URL and create a unique code that is going to represent this long URL. So I'm going to add a new folder, which I will call services and inside of it let's create a new class which i will call url shortening service this will be the core service in our system that returns back a unique code that we can use to identify a long url so i'm going to start off by defining two constants the first one is going to represent the number of characters in the short link I'm going to specify this as seven because this is going to give us a few billion combinations for our shortened link. Then I'm going to specify what is the alphabet that I'm going to use to generate my random short links. I'm going to randomly select seven characters from this alphabet and this is going to represent my shortened URL. I'm also going to need a random field 
which I'm going to use to select the random value from my alphabet. And I'm going to expose just one method returning a string. And let's call this method generate unique code. Now, what does this method need to do? First of all, I need to create an array that is going to contain the characters for my code. I'm going to create a new character array with the length of number of shards in a short link, which is going to be seven. And then I'm going to create a for loop, which is going to iterate exactly seven times, which is going to match our constant. And inside of the loop body, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to create a variable that is going to hold a random index. And I'm going to create it by saying random next. I'm going to take my alphabet's length, reduce that by one, and we're going to take a random index that is going to land somewhere inside of our alphabet. And then what I'm going to do is take the characters array for this current position and give it a value of the alphabet at the random index that we just generated. So this is going to set all of the characters for our code and we can go ahead and say return new string and pass in the characters for this code. There's a slight problem with this implementation because it's overly optimistic. Notice that we are randomly generating our characters for our unique code, and there is a possibility that we could generate a duplicate value, but we need to guarantee that this is unique. So we need a way to somehow access the database and make sure that the code that we generated is indeed unique. So I'm going to persist the result of this method inside of a variable, which I will call code, and we need to introduce EF core to our project and connect it to the database. So let's start by installing the EF core packages. I'm going to look for NED framework, and I'm going to install the NED framework core SQL server package, because this is the database that I'm going to be using. And I'm also going to install package manager tools so that I can generate my migrations. So now let's go ahead and create our database context. I'm going to add a new class to my project, which I will call application DB context. This class is going to implement DB context from the EF core library that we just installed. I need a simple constructor accepting the DB context options type, and we're going to pass this to the base constructor. Then I'm going to define a property that is going to expose a DB set of shortened URL. This is my entity and let's call this property shortened URLs. Also, I'm going to override the on model creating method so that I can configure my database model. And I'm going to say model builder entity shorten URL and I can pass in a delegate to this method to further configure my entity. You could be using the approach where you define classes for your entity configurations. And this is the approach that I usually take, but because this is a simple implementation, this is going to be sufficient. The only additional thing that I'm going to configure is that we have an index on the shortened URL code property. And this index is also unique. To further improve performance, what I can do is say builder, property and I can select the code property and I can say that it has a maximum length of seven or even better I can access my URL shortening service and access the constant defining the length of the code in characters to be able to do that I need to make this public and then I can say URL shortening service number of characters in the short link. The rest of the properties in the shortened URL class are going to be defined by convention, and I don't want to bother with that, but I want to briefly explain why I'm setting the maximum length on this property to seven, and why I'm creating a unique index. By telling the database that the shortened URL code is at most seven characters long, I'm improving performance, and there's also a limitation to how much data you can index, so we're making sure that we satisfy that condition. And secondly, I'm making this index unique to introduce a database constraint that is going to guarantee that this column is going to be unique across my database. And another benefit of this is that the unique constraint isn't vulnerable to race conditions, so I don't have to worry about this in my application code. So let's go back to the URL shortening service, and let's inject 
our database context. So I'm going to say application DB context and let's inject this from the constructor. I'm going to use this in the body of my generate unique code method, which I will make asynchronous. So it's going to return a task of string. And here I'm going to say if db context shortened URLs, any, and let's check if there's any URL with a code matching the one that we just generated. Well, if this is true, then we have a problem. So we're looking actually for the opposite condition. We want to check if this is actually unique. So we can say if not any, and in that case, I'm just going to return the code from this method. Otherwise, we have encountered a duplicate. And what we need to do is to just generate another code. So I'm going to just wrap this in a while loop and I'm going to say while true. And what this is going to do is it's going to repeat the body of this loop until we end up generating a unique code. So I'm also going to make this asynchronous and I need to use any async. Now let's go ahead and configure our services. So I'm going to configure any framework core and I'm also going to configure our URL shortening service as a scoped service because I'm injecting EF core inside which is also a scope service. With this in place, we should be able to complete our shorten method. So we're going to need a few more things inside of the arguments and I'm going to align them vertically so that it's easier to see. So we're going to need an URL shortening service. Let's inject that. I'm going to need my application DB context and I'm also going to need the HTTP context for the current request. So let's also inject that so HTTP context. All right. So now what I need to do is to create a new shortened URL, which is going to be a new instance of the shortened URL class. I'm going to set the individual properties one by one. So we know the long URL because it's coming from our request and we need to generate a unique code for our shortened URL. So let's generate this code before we create a shortened URL. So I'm going to say await URL shortening service generate unique code. To be able to do this, I need to make the entire request delegate asynchronous. And now I can assign this code to my shortened URL. Now for the short URL, which is a fully qualified URL hitting our API and redirecting the user to the original long URL, we're going to implement this using string concatenation. We're going to use the HTTP context to take the scheme and the host, and we're going to attach code to the end of our route. So this is going to hit the new endpoint that we're going to create after this one. And let's also set the created on date and time. Then we need to add this entity to our database context. So I'm going to say DB context, shorten URLs and add the newly created shortened URL. Then I'm going to say DB context, save changes async. And finally, we can return a response to our user by saying results.ok and I'm going to return the shortened URL, short URL as the response. So this will be the fully qualified URL that a user can access and it's going to hit our API and redirect the user to the original long URL specified here. Because of the unique constraint that we have in the database, calling save changes here could fail sometimes in case we run into a race condition but we can handle this in a global error handling middleware and I'm going to omit that part in the body of this endpoint. One more thing I'm going to do is to introduce a helper class which is going to live inside of the extensions folder and is going to contain an extension method which is going to allow me to run my database migrations. And now if I go back to my program file, I can say in case of the development environment, to apply any pending database migration. So something like this is useful in local development. Our API is running in the background and here is the Swagger interface with the one endpoint that we exposed for shortening a URL. The URL that we will be shortening is a link to my blog post called Why Clean Architecture is Great for Complex Projects. If you want to check it out, it's available for free on my blog and you can also subscribe to my newsletter with 26,000 other engineers and I'm going to send you one practical tip for .NET and software architecture 
every Saturday morning. So make sure to subscribe to the newsletter if you want to take your career to the next level. Now let's take the link for this blog post and pass it to our shortened URL endpoint. So I'm going to send this request to our API and we're going to see what will happen. We're going to hit the breakpoint that I added inside of this endpoint and let's walk through all of the steps. So first we're going to validate that this is a proper URI. It is, so let's go ahead and generate a unique code for our short link. And this is the code that we get back. It's something obscure, but it's only seven characters long and this is all we care about. Now let's create our shortened URL instance and we're going to add it to our database context and persist it in the database. And this is the short URL that we are going to return to our client. So let's hit continue. And in the Swagger UI, here's the response that we get back from the URL shortening service. So now we need to build one more endpoint, which is going to match this route, and it's going to redirect the user to the original long URL, which is my blog post on clean architecture. So let's see how we're going to implement that. I'm going to implement the second endpoint, also using minimal APIs, and let's call map get to make this a get endpoint. So the pattern that I'm going to specify is going to contain a parameter that will be available in our route and I'm going to call it code because this is going to match the code that we persist for the shortened URL in the database. In the body of this endpoint, we're first going to accept the code which will be coming from the route. Then I'm going to need access to my database context so that I can check if this code actually exists and if it does, I'm going to redirect the user to this route. So I'm going to say shortened URL and I'll say await DB context shortened URLs and let's say first or default async and we're looking for a shortened URL that has the exact code that we got from the route. The benefit of having a unique index on the code column in the database is performance and if we are looking for a specific shortened URL this will be very fast. So if the shortened URL is somehow null, meaning it doesn't exist in the database, let's go ahead and return results.notFound. So this will be 404 not found. This will happen if somebody uses a shortened URL that doesn't exist. Otherwise, this is a proper shortened URL and we're going to say return results redirect. This will return a 301 redirect response to the URL that we specify. So I'm going to say shortened URL, long URL. And now this endpoint is going to redirect anyone with a valid short URL code to the long URL that is paired with it. So let's see if this is working. I'm going to take the shortened URL that we have here and I'm going to paste it in a new browser window. So if I try to hit this route, look what happens. We land in the why clean architecture is great for complex projects blog post, which is exactly what we wanted to happen. So our link shortening service is functional, but I want to walk you through a few improvement points if you actually get this question in a system design interview. The redirect endpoint, as it stands now, isn't going to be very performant because we are hitting the database on every request. And this won't scale with a large enough load. So one thing you can do is introduce caching here. So when a URL is accessed, add it to the cache, and every subsequent request is going to fetch the URL from the cache, which will be much faster. To be able to scale out to multiple instances of your API, you're going to need a distributed cache like Redis or Memcached. So this is an important improvement point to keep in mind. The second improvement point is related to generating the unique code for the short URL. This implementation here isn't the best in terms of performance because we are randomly generating a unique code and then checking with the database to see if this is indeed unique. Best case scenario is we have one query to the database, but if we encounter duplicates, we're going to end up sending more requests to the database until we finally find a unique code. So one approach how you could improve this is to generate the unique codes ahead of time 
so that when somebody tries to shorten a URL, you already have a unique code prepared. This implementation is also more complex, but it's going to be much more performant than what I showed you here. Let me know in the comments if I should do more system design videos like this one. Also, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. And until next time, stay awesome.